Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me. So for those who might not be aware, I do a weekly roundup video where I discuss a bunch of different topics, usually topics that I did not have the time to talk about in my normal videos. Now this is a bit of a longer style video and it is just more of a discussion than actual Xbox news. I do not quote sources like I usually do on my normal Monday and Wednesday videos, but I still think that there are a few interesting things being discussed, so I wanted to break this longer form format up into smaller highlight videos for certain topics as I know not everyone wants to sit through a 50 or 60 minute video. So if you enjoy these highlight videos please feel free to check out the full episode but let's just get into the video where we discussed the Xbox Series S. Now this is one of those consoles where no one really knew how things were going to play out with the console. Whispers about this console started to pop up in 2018 I believe but no one really then knew whether the console was going to be real or not. Even after the announcement of the Xbox Series X, we still had no real confirmation about the Xbox Series S. And I have to say the hype behind the console was just absolutely insane. Everyone was going crazy speculating about the console. And then Xbox finally announced that the Series S was real. And just like that, the conversation shifted to who is actually going to be buying this console and who is this console actually for. It was not very clear in the beginning the exact target audience for the console and how it will actually stack up against the PlayStation. Even I was a little bit confused as to where this console will fit in, especially after Sony came out with their own digital console that is just as powerful as the PlayStation 5 for $400. After that it was very clear that if the Xbox Series S stood any chance, pricing would be everything and lo and behold Xbox announced that they new console will be $300 which in my opinion is just an absolute steal. Now the reason why I want to talk about the Xbox Series S is because they are starting to become a real competitor for PlayStation. I know that that sounds crazy for the hardcore gamer and it probably is even a normal gamer it might be crazy hearing that. The Xbox Series S falls considerably short to the PlayStation 5 but we also need to remember that who that console is actually actually made for. Xbox did not create the Xbox Series S for the hardcore gamer, they created it for the casual gamer who just want to get into next gen gaming without breaking the bank. And if you take a look at it from that perspective, the Xbox Series S really does hit the mark. Most hardcore gamers who is in a good financial position will just go out and buy all of the consoles. Most have the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5 and the gaming PC, but that is just not the case for a normal gamer. I do not really consider myself a casual gamer but even in my case I just own one console and that is the Xbox Series X. I would love to buy a PlayStation but price wise that's just not in the cards right now. So with the Xbox Series X it costs $500 and then you just get Game Pass for $10 and you're set. PlayStation owners need to spend between $400 and $500 and then you also need to pay $70 per game. Now most people are willing to do that as evident by the amount of consoles that they sell but there is definitely a casual market out there for people who's not really willing to spend that type of money on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 and that is where the Xbox Series S console comes in and where they are starting to become real competition for Sony. Again if you are one of those people who game every day I understand that that might not make a lot of sense to you. It did not make sense for me as well until I started to have a few conversations with some of my friends who I consider to be casual gamers. One of my friends was talking about how he wanted to get into gaming and I recommended getting the Xbox Series X. Now when I said $500 he immediately just completely switched off but then I mentioned the $300 system capable of playing all current generation games and he started to pay attention and then when I mentioned there is Game Pass for $10 
ten dollars. That was it. The Xbox Series S is extremely appealing for casual gamers who just want to keep busy on the weekend. And one thing that Xbox really did do correctly was focus on Xbox Game Pass, having a three hundred dollar system capable of fourteen forty p gaming with Xbox Game Pass is a value that very few can compete with. In fact, I would argue no one can really compete with that. The biggest selling point for the Xbox Series S is Game Pass. I don't believe that that console would have worked as well if Game Pass was not in place. And that is another area where I do need to give credit to Xbox. The money that Xbox has spent with that service and just invested into the service is really going to pay off heavily in the long run. I think in my opinion it already have paid off. Games being released day and date is a huge selling point in itself and if you combine that with the Bethesda deal, things just get a lot crazier. Xbox have no games, it's just no longer a thing or it won't be true anymore. Even if all of the Xbox games releases on PC too, it does not really matter. First of all, it's only relevant if you have a gaming PC and as I just uh, mentioned, casual gamers, most of them don't. If you are telling just a normal person or normal gamer that there is no reason to buy an Xbox because you can already play those games on PC, that is just completely irrelevant to them. They still need to make the choice between Xbox and PlayStation and that is where a $300 Xbox um, comes into play, especially if you combine that with Game Pass. And I think most people, if you put that type of option in front of them, they will just choose the Xbox for $300. And it really is crazy how little some people actually know about gaming. I again had that type of realization when I was speaking to one of my friends about Madden. He really enjoys playing those games and I just was giving him shit about it one day asking him how he can support those games if they are pretty much just reskins of the previous year and EA monetizing the shit out of them and they also have these casinos which pretty much just make them gambling games and when I ask him how he could be supporting EA when they do this type of thing every year his response was who's EA and that just again made me realize that most people just don't follow along with gaming news like we do they just want to play some games at a very affordable rate then they do not really care about the rest they don't have twitter they don't spend their lives on youtube they just want to come home turn on the console and play games and for most people a cheap console is perfect 